Okay, so this is our final practice before the test today. I'm going to go over the first 10 of these problems. This is in the same format of the, as the test. Uh, on the test, there will be an underlined word, and you'll have to uh, say what part of sentence it is. The only difference is that this only has complements, which are direct objects, indirect objects, objective complements, uh, predicate nominatives, and predicate adjectives. Um, and on the test, you'll also have to find uh, subjects and verbs, so just be aware of that. So number one, uh, here is our subject, Ruth, and the verb is became. Became is a linking verb because I can replace it with an equal sign. Ruth equals the new treasurer. Treasurer here is a noun. So treasurer is a noun after a linking verb. So the only thing that can come after a linking verb is either a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. Because treasurer is a noun, it's a predicate nominative. The N in nominative stands for noun, and the A in predicate adjective stands for adjective. Number two, Felix wrote Martha a long letter. So here is our subject, Felix wrote. Usually subjects come at the beginning of sentence uh, sentences, and the verb is not usually too far away from it. Uh, Felix wrote Martha a long letter. Now it's really tempting to say that Martha receives the action of writing, but that's actually not true. When you have an action verb, you have to be really careful. Did Felix write a person? Which is impossible. Uh, writing a person would mean creating a human being with writing, which doesn't work. Or did he write a thing? He, he wrote a thing. He wrote a letter. This is the thing that his pen actually created with his action. So letter here is the D.O. Now another way to think of indirect object is to ask yourself who doesn't receive the action, but who gets the DO? Who's going to end up in possession with this? And the sentence is saying that Martha will get the DO. So Martha isn't created with writing. Martha gets something. She gets the DO. So this makes her an indirect object. And you will always see the indirect object sandwiched between verb and direct object in a declarative sentence. Number three. The students seemed tired. Seemed here is our verb, and here is our subject. The students seemed. Seemed is a linking verb because I can replace it with an equal sign. The students equal tired. Tired is a describing word. It's an adjective. The only thing that can come after a linking verb is a predicate adjective or a predicate nominative. Since tired is an adjective, it is a predicate adjective. Number four, we finished our geometry homework. We is a subject and finished is an action verb. The thing that we finished will be our direct object. After an action verb that is transitive, there will be a direct object. Uh, to find it, just ask the question what or who after the verb. We finished who or what. We finished the homework, so it's a what. This is our DO. Number five. The principal offered the seniors some good advice about choosing a college. Here is our subject, here is our verb. Offer is an action verb, so we're gonna have a DO here. Uh, the principal offered who or what? Well, they, he didn't offer the people. Offering human beings would be like uh, giving human beings to other people, like, uh, I don't know, slavery or something. And that's, a, that's not what this sentence is about. What the principal is actually giving is advice. That's the actual thing that he is, he is transmitting. So here is our D-O. And then like we did up here with Martha in the letter, who receives the D-O? Who's going to get the D-O? I'm not asking who gets the action. Who gets the advice? And the answer is seniors. And that's kind of what the indirect object does. It's sandwiched between the verb and the D-O, and it explains who gets the D-O. Number six, has the coach given the players their gloves? So this is a, a question. This is an interrogative sentence. You can tell because it has a question mark. When you, uh, when you see something like this, you'll notice that the subject and verb gets all mixed around. Here's a helping verb, has, and the main verb, given. And we have the coach. So we kind of have like as the subject. And so we have the subject in between two verbs. And this is called inverted syntax. The, the sentence order is a little bit uh, upside down or backwards. And in English, that's how we communicate that a question is being asked. Anyway, a way to, to get around this is rephrase questions into statements, like the coach has given the players their gloves. Anyway, uh, 
give is an action verb, which will often take an indirect object. Uh, the thing that, or person that the coach gives will be our direct object. Who or what did the coach actually give? Well, he's not. the sentence is not about giving players, just like this was not about the principal offering seniors. The thing that the coach is actually giving is uh, gloves here. So this is our direct object. And like we have done in number five and number two, who gets the gloves? That will be our indirect object. And the answer is players. Number seven. The salad tasted better after you added the horseradish. Here is our subject and here is our verb. And tasted is a linking verb because I can replace it with an equal sign. The salad equals better. After a linking verb, we're not looking for direct or indirect objects. What we're looking for are predicate adjectives or predicate nominatives. The word better is a describing word. It is an adjective. So this is a predicate adjective. It's a P. Okay, number eight. The winner of this year's poetry comp the winner, sorry, of this year's poetry competition was Carli Carlita. Here is our subject. And then there's a long prepositional phrase that separates the subject from the verb. Prepositional phrases include a preposition and then the object of the preposition and all the words in between. So this whole part right here needs to be disregarded because prepositional phrases can never be any part of sentence. Anyway, uh, here is our linking verb. Is, are, was, and were are always linking verb. The winner equals Carlotta. Um, and uh, so Carlita is our either predicate nominative or predicate adjective because that's the only thing you can have after a linking verb. Since Carlita is a person, Carlita is a person, place, or thing, which is the definition of noun. So this is a predicate nominative. The N in nominative you could think of stands for noun. All right, the sophomores chose a new name. Here is our subject and here is our verb. Chose is an action verb. So we're going to have a direct object here. Uh, to find the direct object, answer, ask who or what after the verb. The sophomore choose, chose who or what. They chose a name. So this is our direct object. I'll do one more with you. Uh, what a great leader he became. So number 10 is an example of inverted syntax because the uh, word order is a little bit upside down. And um, when you have inverted syntax like this, um, what you want to do is rewrite the sentence in a more traditional format. So instead of what a great leader he became, you would probably say something like he became a great leader. So this is an example of an upside down sentence. Uh, he is our subject and became is our linking verb. Because became is a linking verb, uh, we're looking for predicate nominatives and predicate adjectives. So he became what? Uh, and the answer is leader. Now leader is a person, so this is a predicate nominative because it's a noun. All right, so here are the answers through one through 10. Uh, I'd like you to take a minute or two to try 11 through 20. And then on the uh, next slide of the presentation is uh, a picture which will show you some of the answers. And then we'll take the test. Good luck.